Jason Fisher here with Conjurer Community Live in the daytime. CC's afternoon delight. I'm joined today by Alexander Slemmer. Say hi, Alex. Hello, everybody. Adam Grace. And hey, everybody. And our friend, no longer a photo, Steve Barcelona. Say hi, Steve. Hey, what's up, everybody? We are so happy to see you here. Today, we're going to watch just a couple tricks that we've been pouring over lately that we love so much that are very, very exciting. You don't need any special magic props for these. Why don't we just fire the first one up, and then we'll talk about it. I love it. All right, here we go. This is, uh, this is the first clip. All right, and let's make sure we turn our cameras off. You've all been so wonderful. We're going to give you something easy on the fingers now, easy on the mind for our big finish, Mr. Adam Grace. Woohoo! Coming up the back street number three with your new favorite trick. Actually, I will say this might be your new favorite trick because who doesn't need an awesome trick that you can do anywhere, pretty much for any audience, and it's impromptu to some degree, meaning you need, a, uh, you need access to a pack of matches. So the next time you're at a restaurant and there's a bowl of matches there or somewhere, you can boom, you can go into this trick. Usually that's when I think about doing it. So this is one of those tricks that's really simple. I learned this when I was a kid and it is literally one of my favorite tricks in the whole world because of those two things. I learned it when I was a little, little guy and, uh, and it just uses a, a pack of matches so you don't have to have uh, any, anything gaffed. So anyway, um, here it is. Is um, this is uh, Dino's? Any of you guys ever eaten at Dino's before? Well, uh, as you <laughs> as you can see, it says ice cold beer and fine food. I've actually <laughs> actually never had their food, um, but I do like to keep a pack of Dino's matches around because uh, they come in handy whenever you know you meet somebody who's uh, if there's any smokers left out there who's smoking. Um, so I use these quite a bit. And if you, uh, if you look, you've got, um, well, I've used a lot of Dino's matches here. I've got exactly one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five of Dino's matches left. We've used all the rest. So what I'm going to do is just going to, uh, I'm going to take number four uh, out of there. So we have, here's number four. I'll set it right there. And there you go. You've got uh, one, two, one, two, one, two three, and five that are left. So there's uh, four matches left inside the matchbook. So check this out. Started with five, removed one, number four. Here we go. You can gather the kids around. Remember kiddies, don't play with matches. Five minus one is four. Let's do that again. Five minus one is four. If you rub it right there, right into Dino's face, ah, number five will disappear. But he doesn't actually disappear. What he does is he jumps back in to the matchbook. You see, because now we've got one, two, three, four, five matches. It's even burned, you can see. Still attached. Look at this guy, still attached. But he, so like, he likes to return right there with all of his little friends. That's one of the best tricks ever. I know, I know, I love it. Man, all right. The best trick ever. I'm just gonna say that right now. I actually, <laughs> I just wanna say on the record, I like that trick a lot better than my trick. <laughs> you know, Adam, I used to bartend and that was one of the things I did all the time. I know. It's I know. so great. It's, it is deceptively powerful. It is. So the reason Adam is the bomb is because I'm looking out for you guys. Okay. Cause I know you need tricks like this. They're visual, powerful, and all you need is a pack of matches. And like I said, the next time you roll up into a joint and you see a pack of matches, matches, it's really easy to set this up. Um, so let's talk about how to do it. It's real super simple. So here's the setup, okay? You just need to burn one match and you need to have that match attached. And then what you wanna do is you wanna just bend that match down because the entire time all I was doing was hiding it from you with my thumb. So I had that, that match bent down, hiding by my thumb. 
and I'm able to very plainly show you one, two, three, four matches. Now I can ro rotate this back and as I do, I can rotate the match right back into place. So I could show the front, the back of this thing, the minute I open it, and I'll give you the exposed view, the minute I open it, I just reach up in here and I just bend that, I just bend that burn match down underneath my thumb. So now I'm holding it literally like this. So that's pretty much all there is to it, guys. So you let the kids count, one, two, three, four matches. Now you're gonna rip out one. And so that I can plainly see one, two, three matches. Here's the fourth. So you're gonna set that one down or you're gonna let someone hold it. Now you're gonna re revolve the whole thing backwards. And as you do, you're simply just gonna kick that match right back up into its place as you close it, okay? That's the entire setup. So now, you got this, right? You need to burn this match because this is the part that's gonna burn their brains, okay? How did the burn match end up back inside there? So I had four, I ripped out one, that left me with three. So now I'm gonna do a bit of math here. So you blow this out. I have four, I had four, I ripped out one, that leaves three. I had four, ripped out one, that leaves three. So here's kind of what I did, okay? You had four, ripped out one, that leaves three. This time, as I say, I had four, I just dropped the match in my lap, ripped out one, that leaves three. I put it there, and so it's just a bit of misdirection to allow you to drop that match right down into your lap or on the floor, and no one ever catches it, especially if you sort of do this, this kind of pacing. This four minus one, that leaves three, so that's it. You can do it a lot of other ways. You could do a symbol, you know, vanish off the table. But anyway, now all you have to do is turn around and open this thing up and that burnt match has returned inside right there. And you make sure that you show that it's attached. And then if you want to, you can even bend it down a little bit. So that way you can hand it to someone to check out. And that's the best part, being able to hand this out because now people are gonna sit there and go, wait a minute, this thing is attached. It's burned and attached. So that's the trick. It's one setup and it allows you to do this trick over and over and over again. All right. So there it is. My Can favorite I, trick. That's a great trick. And let me tell you, I taught this to a guy named Wally when I was bartending and he would vanish the match by eating it every single time. And he would, and I thought you were going to do that. And he would do it like 20 times a night. And I'm like, dude, like, why do you keep eating the matches? Oh, it fools him every time. I'm like, yeah, but you know, you're <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what, what you, what, I don't know. I mean, is that good for you to eat all that sulfur? I'm not I, sure. I don't, Probably you know, <laughs> Wally wasn't the kind of guy that worried about stuff like that. <laughs> Certainly, hey, sure. want to use his is lap Wally as still around? Is Wally still around? I have no idea. You know, All right. it's like one of those people that you know comes into your life for a while and then they're gone. <laughs> you know, and then you eat too many matches and you're gone. Hey, uh, Adam, Mark uh, said that he used to um, uh, rip it out, pre-rip it, and then fake ripping it out, and so he got around the vanish that way. I thought that was a pretty cool notion. Ah. Uh, Right. For myself, I always found that, you know, even if you're scared about lapping, when you're behind a bar, or you're standing up or something, actually dropping a match is literally the best way to learn because you can literally just let it go. And it, it's literally, it's a, it's a confidence builder like no other. Well, the other thing too is that it uses fire. So there's the visual nature to it. I think it's a great visual trick. Kids really like it. And you can, you know, you can oh, tell yeah. the kids don't play with matches. And, you know, Paul brings up a good point, which is matches may be hard to find. In the UK, you can't find them at restaurants anymore. I'm still down here in the South where they have them everywhere. But the great thing about this, just put a matchbook in your pocket and you've got a trick that's tiny and lives with you everywhere. Uh, the other thing is, is that the, if you will start with, um, I wouldn't start with more than about 10 matches. You know, I, I'd rip out all of them. So you only have about 10 because you don't want people counting to, to 20. But, um, you know, 10 is a good place to start. You get to do this effect 10 times. So ah, not, not a whole, uh, all in all, not a bad, uh, a bad idea to just carry your own matches if you can't, if you can't find it. Hey, anytime you can play with, Well, I certainly hope that I'm not stepping on anything by saying that I've always loved that trick. It's a wonderful trick. It's as good as it gets. It's great. It's object magic, you know. It's
it's not a card trick. <laughs> yeah, right. And any matches that are around, you need what, like a minute to prepare that thing. And now you have this thing in your pocket that's like a weapon. And like Adam said, you can just repeat it over and over. That's, that's as good as it gets. I you love know, there's, it. There's this place called uh, Bargain Hunt that you can go to and you can get these. This is a, this costs one dollar and it is basically just filled with your props. Does that <laughs> say Dino on them? No, this, this no. one doesn't. These are just blank, which I actually think uh, I like better because you could combine this with, with other elements that you could use. So if you wanted to do a card trick with a, a simple reveal or something on it, you'd have a reason to bring in the matches at this point. You could even do a folded up card or something in there. So, so I like the blank matches better. So that's Bargain Hunt. Wish we had an affiliate link for Bargain Hunt, but we don't. <laughs> Yeah, it's a killer trick. I, I have to admit, like, uh, you know, you, when you're a kid and you're, and, you're learning, uh, and you're learning lots of impromptu tricks from all the greatest books, uh, that, that trick is the one that, you know, always keeps coming back again and again and again. It's just, it has this, I don't know, it just has this thing to it where it's just so good. I just love it. You know, we all love it. Baxter here says, uh, it's a great comment. You can bend down a burn match, tear out a match, burn all the other matches, then produce one un unturned match in the book of burn matches. It, it really is a, like a cornucopia of conjuring, isn't it? Steve. Yeah, for sure. I, I think it's funny because uh, Todd asked, what about Wally? And I, I'm such a simple person that as you started that trick, I was like, oh yeah, Wally. And that was the first time I thought of him again. And then I popped up saying it. <laughs> So, man, I'm telling you, this is, this is one of those tricks that it's just so good to know how to do. It's, it's powerful. It's easy. You know, you can do it pretty much impromptu. I count this. Do you guys think this is impromptu? Because, like, to me, this is impromptu. Well, impromptu is sort of a misnomer, right? Impromptu right, yeah. implies that nothing has to happen. But, you know, there's always a little bit of preparation. And you have to practice no matter what the trick is, right? So, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's an impromptu trick as far as I I'm concerned. I think it is. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. 30 seconds to a minute, you set up that matchbook, it's done. But what is that little it? secret preparation? Aaron? I have to admit, you know, I am not one of these people that collects a vast horde of impromptu magic. You know, everyone kind of knows the deal with the magic I like to do. This is a trick that I have always done. This has always been a go-to trick. It's, it's that one in a hundred that sticks with me. Uh, that I can really rely on any times I when you know oh if you're a magician you don't have your cards well thank goodness I see that matchbook because I know I know how to do that you know what I mean I can always hack my ham dog my way through that one right that's right it's absolutely wonderful I'm a big yeah. fan of of like not performing unless I'm asked to almost like I don't just bust in and I wouldn't just do that I've never been that way but I can remember times I would set this up, stick it in my pocket and never do it. You know, like you just be that far ahead and then it just never presented itself. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and that's why I think that's what makes this impromptu. It's like if I walked into a place and saw the matches, I'd set it up, you know, and then just see if it brought it, you know, if the moment came about. Right. Because it's unlike some, you know, there's some things we do. I'm thinking about to that Chris Corn event and the wonderful event that we had, you know, some people walk into the, to the kitchen and grab the smallest fruit they can find and just start stuffing their pockets with lemons. And then you can bet in the same way Churchill used to say, you can't simultaneously prepare, prepare for and prevent war. <laughs> you know, if you're going to go into the kitchen and start jamming your pockets filled with fruits and limes, you can bet there's dang well going to be a cups and balls performance. That's right. <laughs> Regardless. And one of the, the smartest thing that Mike uh, Weber ever told me, which was giving me some counsel before some shows I was doing once, is that the best thing about doing miracles on demand, the most important aspect of it is knowing how to let it go. You know, if you happen to have that person's phone number stacked into your deck, or you happen to have the miracle ham sandwich just waiting, if they don't ask for the ham sandwich, you just let it go. <laughs> uh, and that's a really tough temptation. And, and certainly, if you've got lemons in your pocket, you're going to produce them. But the matchbook, you know, you can prep that up and you can just not push it you can do it if it comes up not do it if it doesn't come up right i'm very curious to know among our panel if anyone can think of a couple tricks that are complementary to this trick 
of the sorts of things that you might do if you had these batches out already, you know? Like what, what comes to mind if I wanted to work up my little set with the matches? There's a thing that I have that's in the, it, Good one, sure it's in the, it's in the back room. It's uh, you get, you get the book of matches, you light a match, you put the match out in your hand and you just blow on it and it's gone. <laughs> it's just a complete vanish of a match. And it's wonderful. It's one of my favorites. And at the, if you want to, you can even show that it's in your hand and a little smoke starts rising out of your hand. You know, you, sort of maneuver the match around in your hand you see smoke start rising out of your hand then again you wave the matchbook and it's gone it's really really strong it's we a billy take, mccomb trick we i should love take, it take a moment to remind all of our members about uh the training that we have on that and a lot of thumb tip training for our members in the back room i have to tell you if you're stuck home in quarantine and you haven't learned how to do a thumb tip, i just remember taking a poll of all the campers at, at magic camp many years ago and these are kids that I had been working with on heavy card stuff for years. They were in there getting into be their early 20s already. And I took a poll one year and I said, so how many of you uh, can, can work with a thumb tip? And none of them could. And I think it used to be taken for granted that everyone knew how to work with a thumb tip. And now if you just check it out, if you just check around, what you'll find is 95% of the people who call themselves magicians are not comfortable with doing your basic thumb tip handling. And the trick Alex is talking about is a perfect example. You know, a thumb tip is the ultimate thing to stick in your pocket and then not use or mm -hmm. use because there's a thousand things to do or nothing at all. It takes up no space. You can use it or not use it. I used to be a big fan of that Roger Klaus SpongeBob vanish. Newell has just mentioned something that I think is a killer idea. I really appreciate it, Newell. Sean, in the back room, maybe we should do th this in one of these watch parties, did uh, the burnt and restored napkin trick. Mm. And I That's believe right. that method, you did really also use a thumb tip. And Noel says, hey, do napkin restored, match goes back in the match box. How perfect is that? What a complete routine out of seemingly absolutely nothing. And, mm -hmm. and frankly, that's just a little example of the kinds of things you can do when the thumb tip is with you. It can literally turn anything around you into a cohesive routine. Just to let everybody know, our members, is a, now that we're having these daytime sessions, it's a rare opportunity to get to share with our members things that otherwise you might not know to find, right? Because that back room, our member area, has got a lot of stuff in it that, you know, once you start digging around. I'm just curious, show us some ones. If you ever actually go digging around, in that back room looking for stuff. Nice. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Testing, testing. How's that? How's that sound? Let me go ahead and bring the mic closer and see if that That's way better. Works better. Yeah. Okay. So just to let y'all know, in the back room, the the very first training I did years ago, it's not it's not pretty a video wise, but it's literally some of the most useful training uh, we've ever put up there. And of course it's me and the thumb tip. So who'd even think, but it's the core silk vanish training. You know, we, we take a silk handkerchief, show it on both sides and it comes back out. Right. Just did it. Right. That's the whole thing. That is still, I think the best and easiest way to learn how to use a thumb tip. You've got a lot of natural cover built into it and a very specific sequence that allows you to face your fear. The thing about thumb tips is you have to face your fear a little bit. You're scared of getting caught with a thumb tip on. And that's really the worst part of it. So I really do recommend that you first learn just the silk vanish. Then in a later session, this is all before Alex's sort of beautiful advanced thumb tip training featuring stuff like the, the Slidini. Isn't there a Slidini vanish? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah there's, there's quite a few things in there. There's a sugar packet. And, and all the sugar vanish. It's a wonderful, wonderful routine. Yeah. The $100 bill change Alex teaches. I'm saying previous to all that, I think if you uh, take that silk vanish training I did and the salt vanish training that I did, and then check out a plan, an old plan we did called visual thumb tip transitions, which basically is an entire treatise on how to take all the other magic we were doing things with and transforming any object you were working with into any other object that you were working with. And so that sort of gives you uh, the fundamentals of making stuff disappear and reappear. And then Alex has done all this beautiful, beautiful training 
on everything from the torn and restored bill, the hundred dollar bill change, and all this wonderful advanced stuff. And I honestly think Newell bringing this up, uh, incidentally, just a quick announcement. If you're watching this on your YouTube channel, please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel below this video. See, I'm learning how the modern world works. Right? Uh, that that Sean uh, Mullins burnt and restored napkin is a real keeper as well. So I would love it. I, just let me see a one if you as one of our members happens to have a thumb tip at home. I think it would be pretty easy for us to take one of these sessions next week and turn it into a live hardcore thumb tip boot camp. Can we, Steve, I was yeah. gonna say, can we call it a thumb tip-a-thon? <laughs> and depends on how you tip it off. It's a thumb tip-a-thon. Hey everybody, check out that link. Grab that link real quick from Mike Sproul inside the um, chat. That's the Zoom link for the 5 p.m. meeting jam session that Mike Sproul is going to host in just about a half an hour. So did we get votes? Were those ones that you have a thumb tip or ones that you want to see? One, if you want to have a thumb tip boot camp next week where we just go over some of the basics. Because we would love to do it. I would love to step through the old silk vanish uh, and, and we can just do some real simple basic things because I know, just like a mind reader, 90% of you have got it around and never ever use it, right? Although I, I think, in our club, maybe a little bit more people use it. I think what happens is, is that it's a little more trickier than you think it is, mm -hmm. you know? And then maybe, maybe you show it to family or show it to friends, you get snagged, maybe you get caught out. And then you're like, oh, this, no one's ever going to believe that. And then it's the number one joke in the world, right? Is the rubber thumb is the biggest joke. So if you just- the most embarrassing a, thing, right? Yeah. It's the most embarrassing way to get burnt and never go back, right? Right, exactly. But when you do it right, you don't get caught and it's mind blowing. And there's- I, so I've had this experience. Things. When you know you've done it right is this. When, when you do a trick like that, and you like vanish a silk. I've done a vanishing silk and a vanishing cigarette for someone. And they said, you know, I don't know how you did that. I saw a guy do that before and he used a rubber thumb, but I have no idea how you yeah. did what you did there. <laughs> That's when you, you want to go outside and be like, yes. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So that's exciting because I think uh, we're looking to be inspired as to, you know, I love this, the way that this flows back and forth. Now we're going to look at one more item today, right? And I'm wondering if we should take a look at it now because it uses an entirely different object. And when Alex showed this to us, you'll probably see when I respond, it was literally the prettiest thing I'd seen in memory. Hey, why don't you just, everybody who's in chat, just go ahead and click on that link. Don't copy it, just click on it. And then it'll open up a whole tab for you. And uh, you'll be able to go right there or copy it out of your address uh, bar. Okay. Well then Michael will post it in the member uh, club area uh, on, the, on the Facebook group and you'll be able to get it there. In the meantime, why don't we go ahead and watch this second clip. It's such a beautiful thing. Please pay no attention to the facial hair on that man's face. I'm ready. I'm ready. I have something that's really cool. Let me uh, spotlight this here so we can make sure we have no blinks. I have something that I like to use uh, as, as that little bit of extra something. So like uh, Aaron and I talk about this thing, the idea of the, uh, the thunderbolt, something a little bit extra, or it's something for someone that just walked up and they missed the whole show. Oh, I've got one for you. It'll fool everyone else. And it's, it's just a beautiful thing that just uses a coin and a pocket square. So very simply, you hold a coin, you cover it with the pocket square and put it right in the middle, just like this. And you could feel that it's there. Aaron, if you were here, I'd have you actually grab it. And if you looked underneath, you could see that it's, it's really there. I'm not, I'm not messing around. It's really, it's really under the handkerchief. Now, here's what I would do. I would give you this handkerchief and just give it a little twist like this and have you hold on to the end. And when you're holding the end just like that, I just give it a little, little magical pull, just like this little pull. Look, 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 look. The coin starts to emerge right from the pocket square, just like that. Nice. And I could give out the coin and then have them examine and see that it is just a pocket square, that there's nothing funky or phony about it. Wow. Hey, and not, I have, not only that, woo! we should do something else with the coin. One other thing with the coin. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a little bag with the, uh, with the pocket square. 
just like this. And if I make the bag just right, what happens is I can put the coin inside of the pocket square just like this. And I give it a little tap, make sure it's really there. And what happens is this, I just give a little blow and the coin vanishes. And there you go. That's my little something extra. <laughs> is that like an impromptu devil's hank? I said, you're cool. <laughs> right? Right? No, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, I don't see the pocket. Old idea, man. It's just an old thing. I'm sorry. Let me let me uh, let you guys speak. You, sort of running you, running over here. Do you have your cell phone? Do it again with the cell phone. I love that. Oh, oh, I'll do it. Yeah, let's actually have something better here so that we can do this. Um, let me spotlight it one more time here. If I... Uh, do it one more time here. We'll, we'll just do the whole thing again. I'll just make the bag, the vanish at least one more time here. Make a bag just like this with the, with the handkerchief. And uh, I have I have something else. Aaron's right. It's it's better with a little bit of a little bit of sound. I have a little plate, just a just a tea dish, and uh, I just get the coin and put it in here. And you can you can hear you can actually hear it in there, right? But watch, it goes just the same. Bam, bam. <laughs> that's definitely my favorite trick of all yeah <laughs> teach us teach I, us teach us he teach fooled us, me teach so teach bad us. with this he fooled me so bad with this he went clink 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 and then he went bam and i went what on earth happened so all this right. is a really cool thing so the first part is just from bobo's modern coin magic and if you go and look for it in print what it really is is it's the ring the, the coin through the ring and uh, you actually put the hanker the coin inside of the handkerchief and then you would get you would have the coin under there they could feel it you have them take the ends they thread it the ring into it and there's a ring right below where the coin is and now you pull the coin through the handkerchief that's really what it's from i just took away the ring part because to me it just felt like it was just too slow i wanted to get to the effect so basically what's happening is i'm showing the coin in the handkerchief and through the process of showing the coin in the handkerchief i'm getting it to the other side of the handkerchief so that i can then make it look like it's being pulled through so let me show you what that entails so you legitimately hold the coin at your fingertips ah oh, this is actually a good opportunity for our close-up cam dun, dun, dun. i love a good dun, opportunity dun, for our close-up cam Ooh. love the close-up cam register trademark all right here we go so <laughs> you can hold the coin like this and you're going to cover it with the handkerchief like this. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to get just a little bit of the handkerchief. You're just going to get a little bite of it behind your thumb, just like that. So you're holding just a little tiny bit of the handkerchief. You're going to do this under the guise of, I put the coin under here and you could feel that it's there. And what I've done is I've just made this little bite happen so that now I'm holding that little bite of the handkerchief against the coin. Right, so it goes from that position to me having a little bite of fabric just like that. And I'm holding the coin at its pretty extreme end and that's the top of the coin right there. What this allows for is that I can lift the front of the handkerchief, I can show that the coin is there. And now if I just let everything fall, everything is, on, is, is hiding the fact that the coin is outside the handkerchief. Right? So let me go through this again and show you why, what's going on here. So That's again, so I'm covering sweet. like this. I'm making my bite here like this, as I say the coins here. I lift up, I show, and you need to show it underneath so that you have an excuse to let your hand fall forward and let everything above the bite fall as well so that you have that little bite there that now makes it look like the coin is inside the handkerchief. But in reality, you're out. Right, let me do it one more time here. You cover the coin, goes over the coin just like this. You make your little bite, and I do this as I make a remark of, you could feel the coin, you know? If they need to, I'll let, I'll let them feel the coin, because it's innocent. At this point, nothing tricky has happened other than this little bite, and that could just be the way you're holding everything. So nothing suspicious has happened, happened yet. This is when it happens. This is the, sus the suspicious part. Now I gesture and I show the silver coin, and I let everything fall. So again, in stages, it's that falls, then this falls. And because that bite was there, the coin is now there. But if you do it all in one action, 
Remember the coin's just here. I get my little bite like this. I show, show the coin is really there underneath the handkerchief. And now I just let my, my left hand fall forward so everything falls. Let me do that again so I'm in frame. So I show like this, show the coin like that, and I just let everything fall. And now I'm outside the handkerchief. And once I'm outside the handkerchief like that, now it's a very easy manner to just make this bag around the coin like this. And here's what it looks like from underneath, right? And if I give that a nice little twist like this and continue the twist as I hand it to a spectator and then just have them make a fist around this, now I have this illusion of the coin being in here and I can slowly knead at the fabric and I can then pull that silver coin right through. And they're holding everything, so I just let go. They open up the pocket square and they can see that it is just what it is. And I can hand this out. And the other cool thing about this is that I think if you just have a good rigid piece of fabric, you can do this. You don't necessarily need to have a pocket square. There's no reason you couldn't just use a linen dinner napkin from when you're going out to dinner with friends. It makes it kind of one of those ultimate impromptu tricks if you just have a coin with you of doing that pulling through the fabric. Steakhouse surprise. There it is. So that's, that that's so the cool. first part. Any questions on that before we move into the actual vanish? I think it's awesome. It's classic, man. That's a great. I, you know, I, I can't even, I must have read that years ago because you said it's in Bobo. It's in Bobo, it's, yeah. It's one of those things that I never even attempted. I probably just read it and then skipped right past it and said, I'll learn that later or something, but it looks right. so good. Well, it's easy to do with Bobo because there's so many wonderful things as you're leafing through that. Go, oh, let me try this. And, you know, it is sort of, it, it is that Bible of coin magic. So if you're into coins, there's, there's a lot of goodies in there. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so show us the second one. Okay, so let's talk about how we do the vanish. So this is very deceptive. It's actually a topological thing that's fooling you. Um, let me do it one more time just because, so that we're clear and we understand what the actions are together as we go through this. So you make a bag with the handkerchief just like this. And the idea is that when I make this bag, I can put the coin in the middle like this. And again, we can get a, you can hear it right in there, right? And again, I can just, Give it a little blow and the coin's gone. It looked great. I look great. So let's talk <laughs> about what that is. So there's an actual weird way that you're going to form the handkerchief into the bag. And when you do that, you're actually creating the gimmick for doing this trick. It, and it's a gimmick that the handkerchief becomes gimmicked and then it goes away as you drop everything. It's really, really elegant. So let's talk about what that is. Uh, I have a little teaching aid here so that you can see, and it's just a file card, but it's gonna show you what happens here. Um, when I make this fold, what's happening is that I'm not really making a bag, it's a lie. <laughs> it looks like I'm making a bag. Like when I'm doing this, this all looks like I'm making a bag. But here's what's really happening. Let me show you from behind what's really happening. I'm going to put this file card inside of my bag so that you can see from behind what the real situation is. It's this. Mm -hmm. There's a little shelf here that's being formed by me pulling up a little bit on some of the fabric here so that there's a little shelf that that coin is going to sit in. Now that you understand what it is with just the file card, let me do it again, but with a coin. So again, I'm making this bag. It looks like I'm just making a regular bag, but again, there's a little, a little shelf that's being formed here. If you look right here, you'll see it. There's a little shelf where that coin is just sitting right there. Right? And if I let go with the, the little pressure that I have here, which I'll show you in a second, I can give this a little tap and I can make that coin just shoot right out onto my fingertips and come away. And now I can just grab this and blow and it's gone. Right? So let's talk about how you fold this handkerchief to make this fake bag. You're actually folding it in half diagonally first. And let me do the close-up camera here so we can do it on the table so you can see everything that's happening here and understand this and hopefully be doing this by the end of the night. I'm going to move this down so it's looking at the table a little bit more. I think that should do it uh, right there. Okay, so here's what's happening is that you're making this bag like this. You're, or you're making this diagonal fold like this. You're just folding it diagonally on itself. And what happens is that middle portion is going to become the top of the bag. And I'm going to fold this portion right here up. 
and I'm going to fold this portion right here up like this. But remember, I'm doing this as I'm, as I'm holding it, right? And then that's the little channel right there that gets formed by making this fold. And I'm, let me turn this here to the camera so you can see again what it is. You can see that that's just making that channel there. And it's just because I have the two ends coming up, that's the middle of the diagonal fold, I'm folding up and up like this, right? So that's technically what you're doing to make the fold. Now let me show you how you're making it gaffed so that you can make that little bit happen. So here's a, I'm going to do the wide view again, just so that we can be clear and get all of this in frame. When I hold it like this and do this first diagonal, I'm going to let it drop from either my right hand or my left hand, and this just comes down to what's dominant for you. But you let go with one so that you can grab that middle portion, which is the doubled fabric on itself, so that you're now holding it in this fashion. And then it's going to transfer to this so that I can make, as I'm, as I'm folding this, I'm going to make a bag, right? And what's happening is, is I'm grabbing this extreme diagonal, and I'm folding it up like this, and I'm leaving that open right there. That's where I'm going to drop the coin in. Right? So I transfer this to my other hand and I'm going to do the same thing with my other hand. I'm going to lift up this diagonal corner, but I'm going to do one extra bit here to gaff this. And let me come close to the camera. What happens is this, is that my first and second finger are going to scissor and hold everything at the top. My thumb is going to go inside the bag here and I'm going to lift a bit of fabric like that. And that's what forms when I drop this in here, that's what forms this pocket this shelf that if I let go with my thumb the coin just drops out right so again I'm catching it with my thumb here I'm lifting like that and this is let me do the close-up camera for this bit here so that you see what I'm talking about again just hold the whole handkerchief out like this let me see if I can get it in frame here I'm going to let it fall I'm going to grab the middles and fold up to the middle so that we can get this bag here. I want to get this bag and as I lift up this other corner and come up here and line everything up where I'm grabbing with my first and second finger, I'm scissoring so that I can grab everything like this. Let me see if I can get it in frame here. My thumb goes into the bag and I lift up just like that so that I form that shelf underneath. It's just going in and I'm just lifting that bit of fabric like that. Let me, I think it's going to work better if we go wide here. Alex, is it two layers or one? It is, I'm taking both of the layers here. So I'm going in there with my thumb like this and I'm lifting. Let me come around to the other side of the camera so we can get that here. I'm going into that, basically this, it's mirror of this, right? That bag right there, I'm going into on the other side and I'm just lifting with my thumb like that so that I make that. Uh, Ryan Wall gave me uh, a hot tip of something I had on my shelf. I'm sort of embarrassed that I didn't knew, know about it, but Pat Page has a handling on this, which is pretty wonderful, and this might be helpful for you. So when you're doing the thing and you're making the bag, just like we've talked about before, instead of making the bit with your thumb, you do this. You grab the middle portion with your third finger and your pinky. And then you grab the back portions. When you form those, you're going to just grab those with your thumb and forefinger on both sides. And now you have independent control of what is higher and what is lower. And you just move your thumb and, and first finger up and let the, the pinky and the third finger dr drop down and you're forming the bag. And now as soon as I bring my, my thumb and forefinger down, I'm letting that coin come out. Right. So now it's just a, a it's, sorry. It's just a switch of position so that I can drop in like this, have the thing there. I just drop my first finger and thumb down. And now the coin comes right out. Right. So again, I can lift up like that with my thumb and forefinger <laughs> and sort of dip it down with my third and pinky. And now I can just let it sort of just ride right out just like that. It totally works. Yeah, so both of those ways are an easy way to get it. I, uh, I have sort of uh, been uh, into the one with the thumb where I'm lifting with my thumb and dropping, but I, th I think that's just because that's the way I learned it. Both of them are valid, and both of them are excellent ways to get there where you're stealing the coin out. Um, and I have a couple of options on stealing the coin out. So the first thing is, is that um, 
I'm stealing when I'm doing this, I'm stealing with my right hand. And when I'm doing that, obviously that allows for me to just put the coin in like this. It's inside the bag. I can say it's really there. And I can just leave this hand stationary and just grab one corner and drop everything else in advantage. Oh. Right? Mm. Which is beautiful. Really wonderful. Uh, but there's another option on this. And the other option is that you do the same thing. You make the bag. You put the thing up like this. And if you're wearing um, a sport coat, you have another option for a complete vanish, which is really cool. Um, same thing. I would just switch positions and I could drop the thing in and I do the same vanish. I just let that thing come out like that. And then I come up and then I can just let it drop like this and just show the whole, the whole thing's gone. Show the fabric out like this. And then I can cross my hands like this and come back. And when I cross my hands like this, this is just the position where my coat pocket is. So I can just drop that coin right into my coat and come back around and show open fingers and nothing but a silk handkerchief. So it's just another option on how to, how to make that coin go for real, which uh, I think if you're going to vanish a coin, they want to see the other hand empty. So uh, for what it's worth, <laughs> there it is. That's really cool. I see. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's so great, Alex. Um, and, and ever since that, like I have literally practiced, I have like devoted some major practice time to learning, um, that and both versions of it as well. You, it's a, such a practical impromptu thing. Uh, you know, I've even tried with like paper napkins too. And, and it, of course it doesn't work as well. Right, you know, right, right. It, it will work. You can get, uh, get it to work to some extent, but, but, um, the, you know, the silky napkin certainly makes it, makes it better, but what a great, what a great imp impromptu miracle that, you know, you can just really, uh, reminiscent of, of, of my, my idea of a professional magician whipping out a handkerchief, putting a coin in there and now it's just gone. I mean, it's a really beautiful thing. Yeah. I'm really uh, happy with that thing. Every time I do it, it gets, stellar reactions and i generally use it like i mentioned as as a follow-up you know after i've done i've shown plenty of coin magic here but after i've done one of those coin routines get down to one coin you know do a couple manipulations with that single coin and then do a complete vanish and that's really a just a cool way to do it so uh, i hope you guys try it because it's not that hard it's really a simple thing to do you just, you just got to learn the choreography of folding up that handkerchief but once you have that it's it's locked in and try it with um, with a dinner napkin too, with linen dinner napkins that they have at, at nicer restaurants. You can generally get it to work with that. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to use a handkerchief or a, or a pocket square to necessarily perform that trick, but uh, uh, it's, it's a winner. It's a total winner. I think it's one of those things that, you know, kind of reminds me of silk and silver, which is something that we uh, have, have gone on a great expedition with and our friend Tom Frank did in his lecture as well that Alex mastered and reminds me of expansion texture. Uh, you know, whenever working professionally, I love all the things that can be done with a pocket square. Absolutely love them. And, and this is just one of the most beautiful things you could ever imagine doing with a real pocket square. Um, Newell just mentioned uh, it would be great at some point to get a, uh, a teach-in on the coin fold uh, from Bobo, which is another really interesting super practical thing you can do. You can grab a, you know, a piece of paper or uh, post it or, you it's, know. It's the same effect, right? You put it in there and you, t -t 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 you rip it up and there's confetti and there's no coin, right? You might as well vanish it in a puff of smoke. <laughs> it's pretty uh -huh. good. Pretty good. Are you a coin folder, Steve? No, no, I'm not. That's another one that I stopped doing. Uh, after a couple of years in magic and I, for the life of me, I don't know why. Ah, eh, shiny object, you know, something new comes up and you go, that's it. That's the one I'm going to work on now. I do I've all had, <laughs> Back in the old days when I used to do gigs, yeah. I would have stuff, old, you know, in the olden days, I used to have stuff in my pockets I'd carry around forever. I never, I never did. I never went to it, you know? And I guess that's the true test, you know? That's right. Well, to me, the coin fold is always like a utility thing, right? And, and yeah. so it's this. So the real question is, you know, where do you want your coin to go? And I know Sproul 
is a huge fan, as is Adam, of the uh, coin nest, the nested boxes. Mm. You know, uh, a lot of people have seen those Lippincott boxes. Has ever, everyone seen those Lippincott boxes? Those sort of locking yeah. boxes? I'm, I'm oh, just out there in, in chat land. So good. Um, but I wonder, you know, and when I think about it, how much I would prefer, prefer that or not to the a nest of boxes. For me, I sort of think the nested boxes sort of fits that magician archetype to me. You know, there's something about having a, a ball of yarn and the nested boxes just uh, hanging out there on stage. To me, it's, I don't know, does anyone think the nest of boxes is a better trick than? Uh... It's, it's one of the first tricks that I saw someone do in front of a big group of people. Um, I'm fortunate that I know a guy, you guys probably all know him, Ken Gar. He lived here, lives here in Northern California. And I saw him as one of my first examples of, of stage magic. And he has a great signed bill inside of a nest of boxes that's on display the entire time. And it's, he's a comedian, but the magic punches are coming every single time he opens up another thing and he goes, it must be inside of this thing. And he opens up the next thing. And well, what's this, maybe it's inside of this thing. And you know, each of the, each of the layers were more nonsensical than the one before it, you know, he would, I don't want to give it away what he does, but you know, he's going down through all these layers. It's not necessarily a box and then a box, then a box, but just that idea, that impossibility of it's inside the next thing. And then it's inside how, how, like every time, you just show the thing. It's like you get hit in the head one more time with a brick, you know? It's a great effect. I love it. Huge fan. Absolutely. And, and it's the kind of thing that you can do uh, without being a stage magician. You can really make it play big. And it all really comes down to A, how big a spectacle you can make of having the displayed yarn or, or stacks or whatever, and the vanish of a coin. So, I mean, what it all really comes down to is 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 this vanish of a coin the kind of thing that you would really use in those circumstances? And and I have to say, it's about as magical. Look, there's so many ways to make a coin disappear, because it's really those tricks. Lots of times, the object doesn't even really vanish, right? You know, you you get the same effect. Most people would say, if you take that coin, you just drop it in the jug of money, and then just go right to the nest of boxes and start un unspooling the yarn. And then a box and 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 there you get there. But if you can get that moment in the vanish to be really, really striking, you know, you end up with a much stronger effect, you know? Well, let's see here. What Newell says is a uh, quarter in the nest of plastic boxes. He did used to do it at Hollywood Magic all the time. And of course that demonstrates the easiest version of the trick and the most standard buy it off the rack spend a couple bucks and get the effect and of course it devastates people that's right, right? so one, one other thing Noel mentioned here i think is worth mentioning does anyone here on the panel love or know the buddha money papers oh, yeah. i love the buddha money papers that's, <laughs> that's such a cool trick <laughs> he used to sell those for dollar fifty on the and it's a fooler man if you don't yeah. know there's no way you're gonna figure that one out it's a good one <laughs> For the benefit of our members, who can go ahead and, and just outline the effect for the members? Because I think, put go it ahead. in the box if you never heard of the Buddha Money Papers. You don't know what that he, is. He was demo king of it. No, He's... you go ahead, Alex. I don't remember it as well as you probably do. <laughs> you a lot have, of things have, have happened between now and then. You have a couple, You have it's a couple nests. It's like a nest of boxes kind of, but it's, a, it's paper. It's basically like little post-it notes without the sticky on it are folded up into quarters and let's put it inside another piece of paper and it's folded up and put inside another piece of paper and it's folded up and you can put something inside there like a quarter inside the innermost folded up piece of paper and then you snap your fingers and you open it up and open it up and open it up and there's a little note that says your quarters in your pocket or whatever and it's gone there's no quarter <laughs> it's amazing it's and it's all just a topological thing that's built into these little papers that seem so innocent. And if, like I said, if you don't know, you'll never figure it out. It's such a fooler. It's a, that's a great demo trick. Cause it's like, every time you do it, everyone's like, here's my money. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Newell said, yeah. Skinner did it all the time. Four quarters to a, a $1 bill. There you go. So it could be a change. It could be a vanish. It could be anything. It's, and it's so self-working and so sneaky, you know, and so worth making yourself or buying for four bucks and then building the template, you know. 
That's it's exactly. like a Royal Magic $5 classic. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so let's ask you out there, which of these, uh, which is your favorite coin vanish for uh, a challenge coin to impossible object? I would like to know. Quickly, I just want to make sure that everybody knows tonight we're going to have another special exclusive living room lecture. And of course, this month we're uh, doing our best to share with the uh, magicians in need around the world and inviting uh, them to join us for the Larry Wilmore Living Room Lecture. Larry is a famous comedy writer, producer, uh, and it's a very little known fact that he's also an incredibly skilled, talented, and creative magician. Tonight he's going to be sharing with us stories from a life in Hollywood and TV and uh, making great art, and he's going to get down and dirty and share with us the, the magic that he loves the most. And, and I, for one, am very excited. So bring your deck of cards if you're going to join us for that one. It's going to be super, super swell. Tomorrow, we're going to have a member mastermind. Uh, Adam, why don't you, uh, if you have, a, grab a link. Or yes, a... I will grab a link right now. I'll tell you, give me a second. I'll put it in chat for All sure. Right. And if you're watching us on YouTube, thanks so much for watching us. Make sure to hit subscribe below the video. And check back often because we're uh, sharing just a sliver of the fun that a Conjure community members are having uh, every day, every week during this uh, interesting time in our collective experience. And uh, check back for more from us there or join us inside the club.